deep breaths. I've listened to you and I'm going to let respiratory therapy listen to you now, okay? And I'm going to finish your assessment and then we'll get the doctor in here and he can assess you as well. Hi, Mr. Foster. My name is Lorena from Respiratory. I'm just going to take a listen to your lungs, okay? Yeah, I think he sounds a little diminished. Okay. Probably should call the doctor. That's what I thought. Can we please place a call to Dr. Mosier? Hey guys, what's up? Hey, Dr. Dr. Mosier. So this is Mr. Foster. He is a 60-year-old male who presented to the ED this morning after having a one-week history of a cough. He's been short of breath for the past 12 hours. He has no past medical history. He is diminished in course throughout, altered with a uh, ANO times one. He has a heart rate of 105, temperature 38, blood pressure 101 over 45, and his respiratory rate is 28. Stats are 92% on a non-rebreather mask. Okay, thanks. Got, he got Zosin and vancomycin in the ED as well as two liters of saline. Okay, great, thanks. Sounds like he, cardiopulmonary wise, he's a bit iffy after some resuscitation with his pneumonia. He's yeah. probably gonna worsen. We should go ahead and intubate him for respiratory okay. failure. Can you grab the RSI drugs for sure, me, please? Sure, sure. <clears throat> Mr. Foster, I'm Dr. Moser. I'm gonna be your ICU attending today. Uh, you're gonna hear us talking uh, uh, around the room if you have any questions, let us know. We think the safest thing to do for your pneumonia and your breathing is to put you on a breathing machine so that we can keep your blood oxygen up. Uh, if you have any questions, let us know, okay? Can we start pre-oxygenating him on flush flow rate all the way up? Let me do my assessment for difficulty. So for difficult laryngoscopy, he, he is a little bit bigger. Uh, when I look in his mouth, his modified malampotty is around three. Uh, he can open his mouth okay, I can get three fingers. Uh, in his mouth, I can get three fingers under his chin, two from the hyoid to the cricoid cartilage. He has good neck mobility, uh, although he is a little bit on the bigger side. So laryngoscopy and, and tube placement, there be, are some predictors of difficulty. There may be some challenge there. But mask ventilation, if I do run into difficulty, he, he doesn't uh, have a big tongue. He doesn't have facial hair. He's <clears throat> not a dentalist. Um, he is an older, uh, bigger male, so that may be some challenge. But all in all, I think I could create a mask seal, open his airway, and elevate his chest wall. If we did run into some problems, though, uh, we could put a superglottic airway in, okay, and generate higher pressures to elevate his chest wall. There's no reason to believe it wouldn't seat. Um, but if worst case scenario happened, he doesn't have any expanding hematomas or neck masses, I can palpate his landmarks, okay, so I think I could do a surgical airway. But given his, his potential difficulty with laryngoscopy, do you think you could call for Dr. Milligan down the hall, have her come help me? In the meantime, if physiologically wise, he is at risk of cardiovascular collapse after intubation. After two liters of fluid, his, his shock index is still greater than one. So let's give him another 500 cc's and then start some peripheral norepi, okay. five to 10 mics per minute, should be okay. We're pre-oxygenating him with flush flow rate oxygen from the non-rebreather. Uh, let's try to extend our time a little bit by adding a, a nasal cannula on underneath for apneic oxygenation. Hi. Hey, thanks for coming. This is Mr. Foster. He's a 60-year-old male with uh, hypoxemic respiratory failure and sepsis. We're going to intubate him, but he does have some predictors of difficulty, so I was hoping you could be here to help me. Okay, great. Yeah. Thanks. That out some after you get that. Let's scoot the bed out a little bit. We'll need the airway cart and the CMAC. we just take a minute and go through the plan to make sure we're all on the same page? Yes. So he does have some predictors of difficult laryngoscopy, but mask ventilation and surgical airway should be okay. So 
Uh, I think I could safely RSI him. Plan A will be RSI with a hyperangulated video laryngoscope. If that fails, the most likely reason, it, uh, based on his characteristics of difficulty, would be difficulty getting the tube up around the corner uh, using a hyperangulated blade. If that happens, I'll use a traditional uh, Mac 3 blade on the C-Mac. And if that fails, the most likely reason will be difficulty getting a view because he does have some predictors of difficulty. Uh, in the event that that happens, I'll have a bougie there for uh, in case I, all I can see is epiglottis. But in the event that that fails, the plan C will be an extraglottic device that I'll use as a blind conduit for intubation through. And if at any point we can't oxygenate him, we'll do a surgical airway. Is everybody okay, okay with that plan? Yes. Okay, any questions? No. He, he is... We'll do automate 20 milligrams and uh, rocuronium 100 milligrams. We need at least one per kilo. He is at risk of rapid desaturation, so let's have everything on the cart or on the table. We have the the airway cart outside the room in case we need it, but <clears throat> let's make sure we have all of our stuff. So we've got suction, we've got a bag and a mask with a peep valve. We've got the easy cap. We've got our device, our backup device. We've got our oral airway. We've got our oral airway. We've got our extraglottic device, bougie. We've got our tube. We have smaller tubes outside if we need it. Do you have a scalpel? Yes. Okay. Scalpel. Uh, tube. We have a smaller tube. He's a little bit bigger, so let's position him. We need him ramped go, buddy. with his neck flexed and his head extended. All right, is everyone ready? Yes. Okay, Mr. Foster, we're gonna put you to sleep now. You, this might burn a little bit, but you'll go to you'll go to sleep, and you shouldn't feel anything. You'll wake up on a ventilator, but we'll keep you comfortable. All right. <clears throat> CMAC works, backup blade is there. Okay, let's go ahead and push the R side ribs. All right, I'm gonna get 20 milligrams of atomidate. I'm giving 100 milligrams of rocuronium. Right, give him a little jump rest. He's received his RSI meds. You should back up just a little bit to get a better view. We're starting to drop a little bit. We're down to get it up there. We should bag them up. Uh, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. My heart rate's going up. It's up to 130. No, let's back. Let's okay. back up. Here, just do a two-man approach with bagging. There you go. Do a better jaw for us. Perfect. Had a hard time getting around the corner, so let me try the regular Mac 3 blade. Okay. Can you take over this? Floppy epiglottis. I can't really see around it. You want your bougie? Yeah. Okay. Are you in? I think so. Okay. Balloons 
Hands up. Bag a little faster. No, I don't think you're in. So we're not going anywhere. Okay. Yeah, right. let's pull it out. <clears throat> okay, Mecca. Okay. Give me that oil airway. He's only in the mid 80s. I don't want to make a third attempt. I'm having a hard time with a hyper regulated blade and a regular blade, so let's try the extraglottic device. Okay. You got a good seal. this. I mean, a lot of resistance. Twist it. He's not he's starting to drop again. Uh, Go to smaller too. Here, let's bag him up again. Can't pass it. Yeah, let's... Okay, all right. I, we have a failed airway. I can't intubate him, and we can't oxygenate him anymore. Let's go ahead and do a surgical airway. Secure this tube, put them on waveform capnography, call for a chest x ray. Thank you, everyone. This video demonstrates several key components of airway management that we commonly encounter outside of the operating room, both good and bad. We demonstrated two behaviors that are commonly encountered, which make airway management more difficult and less safe. The first is inserting the blade of the videolaryngoscope too deeply into the airway, which while it improves the view, makes passing the ET tube more difficult, not less difficult. The second is fixating on passing the endotracheal tube in the face of desaturation. However, we demonstrated three critical actions that can be performed to greatly improve the safety of intubation in critically ill patients outside of the operating room. The first is to perform a thorough airway assessment for potential difficulty. The second is to prepare for that difficulty, and the third is to recognize and manage failure.